Despite publicly condemning Elvis's music and dancing, Frank Sinatra was forced to invite him to his national television show. At the time, the King was filming G.I. Blues and his co-star was Old Blue Eyes' fiancé. That's why in this video, we'll delve deeper into what really happened between Elvis and Frank Sinatra's fiancé and how it affected the relationship between the two stars. When Elvis Presley and rock and roll pushed Sinatra and his generation off the charts, the crooner denounced the new music as degenerate and phony, sung by credentious goons. The King was eventually invited to appear as his special guest on a program celebrating the star's March 5 return to the U.S. after his two-year military service in Germany, because Sinatra could no longer ignore the way it had taken the country and the world by storm. Elvis managed to fit it in between his hectic filming schedule for the upcoming film G.I. Blues. Despite everything that was occurring behind the scenes, the two men were all smiles as they played up their rivalry, joked around, and even performed medleys of each other's songs. Sinatra's decision to change his mind about rock and roll in general was a savvy move that not only helped to close the generation gap, but also saw the ratings for his TV program soar to new heights. Elvis, who wanted Old Blue Eyes endorsement to help expand his audience, saw Sinatra's invitation as an opportunity to take an ambitious step up. At some point, he would start appearing frequently in Sinatra's stomping ground, Las Vegas. The fact that Elvis was dressed formally in a black evening suit, like his host, indicated that he was entering Sinatra's world. Elvis even avoided his signature wild hip gyrations, which had caused offense and resulted in him being filmed from the waist up only a few years before. Indeed, the Memphis singer appeared to be more mature than before. Despite his tuxedo's awkwardness, Elvis presented a picture of stylish sophistication. Even so, some of his female fans in the audience let out wild screams despite the toned-down nature of his performance in which his only physical movement was a series of amusing shoulder hunches. During the show, Sinatra even attempted to dance with Elvis, despite the fact that he had said of rock and roll just two years earlier that, it is the most brutal, ugly, degenerate, vicious form of expression it has been my displeasure to hear. It fosters almost entirely negative and destructive reactions in young people. It smells phony and false. It manages to be the martial music of every sideburn delinquent on the face of the earth, and I deplore this rancid-smelling aphrodisiac. It is sung, played, and written for the most part by credentious goons, with almost imbecilic repetitions and sly, lewd in plain fact, dirty lyrics. Elvis may not have lost any time serving in the military, but Sinatra made fun of the fact that he had lost his sideburns in a joke on his program. Even though he had just left his future wife, Priscilla Beaulieu, behind in Germany and was still formally dating starlet Anita Wood, Elvis was secretly having a passionate affair with Juliet Prowse. Prowse, an actress and dancer, had been with Sinatra ever since they had first met on the set of the musical Can Can the year before. The crooner was so taken with her that he invited her to appear as a backing singer on his national TV show. He even sings some songs directly to her. You and Herr Klugman have much in common. Uh, now, wait a minute. But Prowse began shooting G.I. Blues with Elvis in April 1960, in which she portrayed club dancer Lily. As was frequently the case, the king soon began an affair with his stunning co-star, who later told Sinatra, and then the public, about it. Elvis and I had an affair. We had a sexual attraction, like two healthy young people, but he was already a victim of his fans, so we met in his room and never went out," Prowse explained. Extraordinary still, she publicly acknowledged at the time that Sinatra was aware of it. Frank and I are mature people. We don't go for this teenage bit about going steady and all that jazz. Prowse, who was 24 at the time, continued. In fact, their relationship only grew stronger after her affair with Elvis. 
she would also accompany Sinatra to his Las Vegas engagements, and he proposed to her in 1962. However, it quickly fizzled out because Prowse reportedly wanted to concentrate on her own career. I was as much flattered as I was in love, she later admitted, because he was a complex person, and after a few drinks, he could be very difficult. Unfortunately, she was unable to land larger Hollywood roles, so she left to pursue opportunities on the stage. Ironically, despite the fact that her voice was dubbed in GI Blues, she became a huge success when she landed the lead role in a 1967 London production of the musical Sweet Charity. It also ran in Las Vegas, where she went on to have a prosperous second career as a cabaret performer. Meanwhile, Sinatra became friends with Elvis as their respective careers began to overlap in the late 1960s and early 1970s, with both headlining lucrative residencies in Las Vegas. He even begged the king to change his life in a desperate call. When they all had their own shows as the headliners in the mecca of casinos, both stars also grew close to Tom Jones. Years later, Sinatra admitted to trying to save the king in a candid conversation that was revealed by Jones's publicist, friend, and journalist Chris Hitchens. He told Tom Jones and me that he had just spoken to Elvis when we met up with him for a drink in New York, Hitchens recalled. The king had liver issues when he was hospitalized in August 1975 and his heavy drug use had made them worse. As his friends and family began to worry about him, his fellow star made an extraordinary intervention. In Hitchens' account of his conversation with them, Sinatra said, When I called the hospital in Memphis, the girl on the switchboard asked, Who's calling? And when I said, Frank Sinatra, I fully anticipated her to say, Oh yeah, and I'm the Queen of England, or some other stupid line. But a few seconds later, Elvis Presley answered the phone, indicating that she must have recognized my voice. I told him he needed to take care of himself and stop playing around. I told him he was too young to die. Tragically, Elvis would pass away on August 16, 1977, exactly two years later. At age 42, his cause of death was listed as heart failure, which was made worse by systemic, prolonged overuse of prescription drugs. And that's it about Elvis Presley and Frank Sinatra's relationship. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more celebrity news.